Hello, my name is Russell Schiff. And I'm Pam Schiff. And Pam and I will be reviewing chapters 8 and 9. And I will be, I'll take chapter 8, Pam will take chapter 9. So Gideon has defeated the Midianites. And Gideon's army is only 300 men. Meridian's army is around 135,000. Gideon's army kills 120,000 and captures two of their leaders and kills them. Two other leaders flee and Gideon pursues them. Gideon and his army became tired and hungry, so they go to Surkoth and for refreshments, but the leaders of the city mock and belittle them. Gideon tells them when he returns with the two leaders, he will beat them with thorns and briars. Also, he went to the city of Pedul, and the men of the city mocked him the same way that Sukkoth did. Gideon said that at his return, he would tear down the tower and kill the men. Meridian, I mean Gideon, did capture and kill the two leaders, and he returns and punishes the cities. The men of Israel wanted Gideon to rule over them, but Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you nor any of my sons. Only God shall be you rule over you. Then Gideon makes a mistake and melts down uh, jewelry that was given to him by the Israelites. Gideon makes it into an ephod, and the Israelites played the harlot with it and worshipped it. Then the land had rested for 40 years. Then Gideon dies, and all Israel makes Baal their god. What I see in this story is Gideon's, when Gideon met Jesus, he believed in him. And he believed that he was the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he followed him and trusted him. But the Israelites didn't know God. They neither believed in him nor trusted him. They only followed the the judges as they as long as the judges were alive. So my hope and desire is under the new covenant, we we get to know God and and Jesus and the Son and the Holy Spirit and develop a relationship with with them. So my prayer is that as we get to know God and listen to him and his voice and trust in him in every respect of our lives. Okay. Gideon had 70 sons from his wives and one son from his concubine. The one son from his concubine was Abimelech. Abimelech uh, wanted to rule and he went to his mother's relatives in Shechem and he said, would you rather have 70 sons rule over you or just one who's a relative? And he talked them into siding with him. So they agreed with him and they hire, they give him money. And he hires what the Bible calls worthless fellows. And they went and they killed the 70 sons of Gideon, except for the one who got away, who was Jotham. Jotham is the one, it was a son, okay. So the men of Shechem and Beth, and Beth Milo, which was Israel at the time, made Abimelech king. And Jotham, the son that got away, goes up to Mount Gerizim and he yells down to them and he gives them a prophetic word. And he says that there was a time when the, the trees wanted a king to rule over them. And they went to the olive tree and they said, come and rule over us. And the olive tree said, why should I leave, leave my fatness and come and rule over you? And then they went to the fig tree and said, come and rule over us. And he said, why should I leave my sweetness and come and rule over you? Then they went to the vine and the vine said, why should I leave my new wine, which cheers men and God and come and rule over you? And finally, they go to the bramble. And the bramble says, yeah, if you want to anoint me king, fine, but you have to stay in my shade, in my shadow. And if you don't uh, do everything I want, 
then you will fire will come out and consume you. So Jotham said to the people, he said, if you've truly and fairly dealt well with Gideon and his family after all they've done for you, then go ahead and enjoy Abimelech being king. But if not, then may fire come out from Abimelech and from you and destroy you all. So I wanted to zero in on the parable that Jotham gave them. It says in Matthew 24, I mean 20, chapter, verse, chapter 20, verses 25 to 27, Jesus is speaking, and he said, The Gentiles lord it over people and rule over them. And you're not to be that way. But that you are to be, if you want to be great in the kingdom, you need to be a servant. And one of the challenges that we may face is sometimes we may want to rule over others, or we may want others to rule over us. And that spot is only for God. So when they went to the olive tree, the olive tree is what comes from which comes our anointing oil. And the olive tree said, no, why should I leave my anointing and come and rule over you? We're all called anointed to do certain things that God has called us to do. Not that men have called us to do, but that God has called us to do. Then when he went to the fig tree, why should I leave my sweetness and my fruit? The Holy Spirit is the one that gives us sweetness and fruit. We don't want to go away from whatever the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives to do something that he's not asking us to do. Then he goes to the vine and says, shall I leave my wine? And that makes uh, God and man rejoice. Shall I leave my wine to rule over you? And they said, no. So we don't want to leave the word. Jesus calls the word new wine in the New Testament. We don't want to leave the word of God and go follow words of men. Now the bramble had no substance. The bramble had no fruit. But it was willing to rule over them. And that's the way the enemy is in our life. He's willing to rule over us. But uh, there's no substance to him. And there's no fruit, no good fruit from him. And fire can come out and destroy people when they get involved with him. So we're to admit, submit to one another in the fear of the Lord, it says in Ephesians 5 or 4. But that, and also in abundance of counselors, there's wisdom. So we can talk and share, but there's no ruling over. If we want to be great in God's kingdom, we need to be servants. So after... All of this had happened in chapter 9. Abimelech had burned a tower with a thousand men and women in it. He also went and found another tower and was going to burn it. But there was a woman up in the tower and she threw a millstone down over and kill it, hit him in the head. And then he didn't want to be killed by a woman. I guess that was a really bad thing in those days. And so he had his armor bearer kill him. And so they died. And God avenged the murder of Gideon's family and brought res recompense upon them. So the whole thing that I would learn from this is that we need to keep only God as our ruler. We don't want to rule over others and we don't want others ruling over us. We just want to be supportive and undergirding one another.